We are getting ready for our Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Instagram Live, Group Set Live for the month of April. How are we going, guys? That's Stephen's tiling, I think it is. How are you, Lexicon? How are you going, guys? Starting to flow through on Instagram. Good to see you. Join us on this April session of our live Grips it live, LF Waterproofing. How you going, boys? Good to see you. Built in situ is joined. How are we doing? Good to see us. There's now some numbers coming through on our Facebook and YouTube. Ash, how are you? Good to see you. Lexicon, hey, how are you doing? Paul from Densor, it looks like. How are you doing? Exodus Waterproofing, they're all jumping on Instagram tonight, which is fantastic. How are we going, guys? Um, so, look. I'll get started because we're going to have this as interactive as possible. So tonight we're talking about technology and waterproofing or waterproofing technology. And I want this as interactive as possible. I'm going to share with you some of my thoughts on where the industry is going, how we get some improvement out there. How are we going, guys? Gen 3 Tiling has joined and I'm trying to see. Um, but, uh, anyway, it's, it's all a bit of a blur at the moment. My eyes aren't that great. But hey, we are talking about technology and waterproofing, and we're going to cover off on where the improvements have been, where they're going, what you'd like to see, suggestions you guys might have for the future. Valentino has joined VOM Waterproofing or VCM Waterproofing. Here we go. Love the contents. Thank you very much for those kind comments. Uh, for Waterproofing is there. You're all jumping on board. So guys, I'm going to start with now, we're getting to the winter months, and we talk about waterproofing technology, and where's this industry gone? And I'm talking about a bit about Gripset tonight and in general where we are going as a industry, not just a company. But we had discussed of late, you might have seen some of my uh, Midas rendering. How are you going, boys? You might have seen some of our content um, and suit for good programs. We spoke about the technology moving from away from things like bitumen towards butyl. And the BRW range is, is a classic case of where technology has taken us without all the hazards and the flammables and the toxins involved with bitumen waterproofing and the limitations they have in the cold or the heat, whereas butyl is just such a great technology. And those of you who have been using BRW range, whether, whether it's the HD or the PF grade or the tapes, will know exactly what I'm talking about. Things like a grip set 38 FC, still the market leader in terms of fast cure. 48584654 liquid membrane, how quick it dries, sets, cures, allow, especially in those winter time. And the other liquid membranes that we have, like our um, Express Pro. Okay, and those of you that have tried that and see how quick that can take rain wash out, it's a fantastic product. Dave Berry, how are we going? Um, more importantly, is also things like the real technology where we had our express lay sheet and we showed you how that's been used and a lot of you have been posting and showing how that's being used, which is fantastic. Um, and so we are now at an industry, a bit of a junction. We're in 2021, the worst of COVID, we believe in this country is gone. And so where do we start to develop? So any questions coming through, please push them my way. Um, but... Liquid membranes firstly. I think what we all want from a liquid membrane is something that obviously is safe. It's got to be effective, most importantly. But these days, I think many of you have worked out that if it's drying and curing quickly, then even though it might on the, at face value seem more expensive than the cheaper products, it's going to allow you to finish your bathrooms and your jobs quicker. And when that happens, you then can make more money, you can do more jobs, and you prevent any washout. And that's a real issue this time of year or delayed trades or those that don't pay attention and end up risking the concerns of getting over it too fast. So that is a real um, advancement. And that's where our Express Pro has been a fantastic product for that. And also our primers. We talk about primers, how important it is for primers to dry quickly and to go on easily without issues and dilemmas in terms of delays and requiring the, the right temperature to put it down. Now, you need to pay attention to all the, the 
surface conditions and ambient conditions with weather and temperature and humidity. However, you must make sure that we always follow those data sheets. But when you have got those areas right and you've got the conditions correct, then you might want to find those products that allow you to just flow on with the job. So our liquids obviously are the way to go in terms of being fast cure and solvent free. However, the sheet systems are the technology that's going to take us to the next level. And I'm going to share something with you shortly of, of further improvements with our sheets that you don't know about. So we spoke about the express lay, obviously very fast, unbelievable strength in terms of it's unheralded in terms of what can compare to that, very quick to install. The BRW butyl range. There's some photos going to come out shortly. I saw my team share them around last night on their chat with some jobs that have happened in Melbourne and Sydney of late with the HD system. And you need to see how well that product is used. It's so forgiving in terms of its detailing. It almost looks like it's been welded together. And I know there's the welding sheet systems out there. Very expensive. You've still got heat to generate on site. You're going to have the expensive guns. There's a, there's a potential safety concern and hazard with, when you're dealing with those sorts of all pieces of equipment. But we overcome that with our butyl range and the HD system, and it is bulletproof. And so, so easy to be able to fix and detail around those problem areas. So when you see those photos on upcoming posts, please pay attention to it and speak to the sales team out to show you how to use them. Now, in terms of um, the PF, the BRW PF, if any of you have used it, put your hand up and let me know. But more importantly, those of you that um, have used it, we've gone to a further improvement. So the one limitation we had, and this is all about technology, so we talk about technology and waterproofing and how we can keep improving products. So our BRWPF has been a polypropylene fabric, the same as our tape. However, we are moving in the next few months to an improved grade, which is called the PFN. And this is a needle punch fibre. And what it does, it allows you, best systems, love it. Thank you, that was Chios Building Services. Thank you very much for those comments. Um, the PFN, the advantage of it is it has high strength, but those of you who have used the, the PF know that, particularly in the sun, you can get a little bit of lost form in the shape with the heat. The PFN allows you to overcome all of that, and it will give you further improvements, further benefits, and takes technology to another level. And there's not a sheet membrane on the market for tiling over like this product in terms of a butyl, butyl system. So when you see that come out through our resellers out in the country, ask them about it, look at the improvements. You'll be marvelled like everyone else that has. ASD tiling, how are we going, guys? Um, and give it a go because, again, once you've used these systems, you won't go back. Now, a lot of the HG systems with the technology they're at, they are ten, tended to be used underground. However getting lots of jobs where it's being used on balconies and bathrooms and then the decoupling system goes on top like the express lay or when they want a double barrier system, they can go with a PF on top of the HD and tile directly to that or screw to it. It is just technology that's available to you now. And those of you that are coming on board, I know that some of you are conservative and you don't like changing your ways, you're coming into the winter months. There are jobs where you can win over your clients, but more importantly, those of you just for yourselves, to win over yourselves in terms of executing your jobs quicker. And the technology is there. If we don't embrace it, it's like trying to use the old mobile phone that was like a brick. If you remember, if you're old enough to remember that, you're not going to carry something around that's like that to talk on the phone. We want the Apple iPhone. I want the 12, the 13, the 14, whatever's coming out. You've got to embrace the technology and waterproofing as well. And so liquid systems, sheet systems, primers, detailing, we know where our Elasto is as a market leader in terms of the detailing systems for things like um, wall floor junctions and detailing, balconies and joints and, and expansion joints particularly. However, there's a few more additions to the range that are coming out. Those of you that have been familiar with our BRW tapes, we now have our FG tape. Now, that doesn't look much to you, but I'm just, I've just i cut off a small sample before. And this product, is quite phenomenal because though you use the BRW ceiling tape before, particularly for things like protection boards and infra board 
on underground walls, found that the simple one, when you used it, it, it worked, but when you tried to apply, it would stretch out. Well, this is our FG, standing for fiberglass reinforced. And this, as you'll see, witness, I'm pulling that and it's not losing its form. It's fiber reinforced in there, but still sticks like the proverbial. And the beauty of this is, um, it's, we've been working with it with our Dinsel system. So we use the BRWHD, or any of those systems that are similar, where you've got a non-porous surface, and we're using this as a double layer seal at the critical junctions, and then using our tapes on top. This is very forgiving for areas where you've got to use, even um, for detailing for the sheet system, but where Shandy and I have been talking about a lot of late, and I think he's starting to show it in the, in the gap courses, is where we're using this underwater stocks. And how many of you have tried the gunk in? Fantastic feedback as well. Thanks, Paul. Um, how many of you tried the gunk in polyurethane, even MS sealants under your water stops or flashing details? You've got to wait for them to dry. You've got to be careful that you don't get on top of it too early because it can impact the membrane. Well, this material now, you can peel this. It's double-sided. It bonds to glass, steel, concrete, any of our membranes in a prime surface. And then you can bed your water stop directly on top of that. It won't move. But more importantly, when you bed it into that, it acts as a seal and nothing will travel underneath it. And so this now opens up the door for a lot of applications that you've not been able to do before. Jim Spiropoulos, how are you? Thanks for joining. GG Tony have joined. How are you going, guys? Um, so get on board with it because, again, it's some neat technology that's been brought out. It's not rocket science, but it's clever. And our systems are always designed to save you time and help you make money and help you do a job better than before. That's how we advance the industry. So if you're trying to understand what the BRW FG tape, it looks like that. Our resellers have got it in their stores. But try it. This is the sort of thing that you want to carry in your van or your utes or your cars at all times because it will get you out of trouble. And it gives you an instant seal when you use it. And you can double layer it, vertical, horizontal surfaces as well. The other thing that we've got, those of you who have been doing underground work, we've now got a beautiful swell seal. And I know Brad in Sydney, our, our Brad in Sydney has been very proud to get this out there amongst the team and the guys in Queensland are starting to get it out there as well. But if you've been using swellable seals, we now have, a, now have a, our BRW Butyl Swell Seal, which is an ideal water stop for when you need to use it for a swelling application with underground applications before concrete pours, etc. If you want details on that, our team can help you. But this is where all the technology is heading. These sorts of systems are where they're going. Now, let's, if you've got questions, fire them my way. For some reason I can't see any of our Facebook friends with questions tonight. So... If you have been sending anything through, you might want to just switch over to, to uh, Instagram so I can see that. But more importantly, what I wanted to ask you is what you think we need to have advancements in the waterproofing industry or the surrounding trades. It might be tiling. It might be the, 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 the sheeting systems that are prior to it. I'll give you my thoughts soon. Alpha waterproofing, great. I'm glad you're going to get onto that swell seal. Um, because... It's really important that we look where the advancements can be because that gives feedback to manufacturers like us and companies that are very innovative to develop the next range of products and understand where your pain points are. The other thing with technology that we talk about, and I'm talking about equipment now, just briefly, you guys should have moisture meters with you. you know, there are many, many of them. I've seen a couple of the cheapies in some of the hardware stores. I'm not sure if I'd actually go and invest in that. I know there might be these cheaper ones that are sort of $50, $60. Guys, it might cost you a bit of money, but there's some really good products out there, and that will enable you to really take note of temperature, surface temperature, humidity. They can record all sorts of information, but more importantly, record that data. Exodus has got a question. Which is the best system to fill or bridge control joints in a retaining wall? Great question, Exodus. Um, Guys, when it comes to retaining walls and you've got those constant moist areas, the Elastaproof B50 joint band for a control joint is best. Um, it's the, the it's headache-free. You embed it into the membrane system you're using. So if you're using a C1P, you embed it into that. You can embed it into one of our liquids, even into our epoxy E60, if you're going to use one of the sheet systems that go over it after to incorporate it with it. 
but I would go with that because it, it's very forgiving when you're uh, a retaining wall is often a damp substrate or it can be damp this time of year and it overcomes it. The butyl would work on a control joint, not an expansion joint, but the last proof B50, been using it for decades, never let us down that application. So maybe give that a go. I hope that works for you. So we're talking about moisture meters, guys. Moisture meters, I think it's the worthwhile investment. Coming up to June 30, you might be budgeting for next year. Put it in your budget because it's, again, when you go on site, and now I'm hearing all these stories about certifiers and um, building consultants out there, and they're looking at what waterproofers are doing. When you have a good moisture meter with you, and you are recording this information, and you are issuing this information to your clients, you not only look professional, but you got backup data to prove the day you did it, it worked. Tiles in style, another quality product. Thank you very much. Great for the feedback. I appreciate it. Um, so important for you guys to have that, a moisture meter with you. There's some really good brands. We looked at one, um, and Shandy's got some details of it from Germany. Fantastic brand. It's on the pricey side, but it's the sort of thing that will last you for a decade, and this thing records everything. The date, the, the hour that you, you, that you tested the substrate, it records the humidity, uh, the substrate temperature, and then the changes between the times you might test it. And it comes with a, a card that you can actually load into your computer and you put that information in there and with your records. And this is where waterproofing trades are going to go to the next level, is how you record data and use data and use that technology. So moisture meters are important. We might hold another session on actual gadgets and apps, et cetera, for technology. But tonight we're talking about waterproofing product technology, but moisture meters go with that. And the other one that, that I believe you should have in your armour is a film tester, particularly those of you are using liquid systems, sheets, well, a sheet's a sheet. If it's made with a quality system in the factory, if it's one mil at one end and the 20 metres down the line is still one mil, it should be that way all the way across, but, or two mil or three mil, whatever the system is, if it's a torch on or a vinyl or, or a PVC sheet, but liquids, how many questions come up about, you know, have you put it down the right thickness? I'm seeing a thin patch here. People doubting your workers potentially that they might want to put one coat down. A dried film thickness is something else that you can record randomly and show it to your clients and to your staff. Barley bathroom, still struggling to find the complete range here in Melbourne. Barley bathrooms, I want you to go on that phone tomorrow, 1 800 650 435. We'll get Darren's details to you, but you have got the full system access in Melbourne. And we'll make sure you're guided there. Our people are there. Our stores are there. Our gap resellers are there. It is there. Melbourne, it's the last place you won't find grip set. But uh, give us a call tomorrow and we'll make sure you are set up and on your way. So dried film testers, guys, I suggest that that's something that you look at investing in as well. Because when you've got it, it's even one thing that you can have for your staff. You might have a supervisor. When the system's dried, you can record it, you can give it to your client, you can do random patches. We've got some details on that. And these things are starting to come through with the GAP courses as well on how to do that and what information you record because it's now we are in this litigious um, legal society and waterproofers, unfortunately, are always blamed, even though when it's not their fault, it could be a construction or a structural issue or perception issue. But get there and make sure that um, you yeah, that dry film tester to record your data. Now, Gavin Tiffler, keep the videos coming. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying them. Paul, your products answer all the commissioner's questions. Fantastic feedback, Paul. I really appreciate that. Um, and that's good feedback for our team because we put a lot of effort into ensuring that you guys are hassle-free on site. Has he been aware of your products? I'm not sure. If he hasn't, but if he maybe we can invite him onto one of these um, lives, or we'll get him on a suit for good. If you think that might make a, a good episode, we'll get him on there and talk about waterproofing in general because I think that would be a great way to get some of the messages and understand where they're coming from into the audience because you guys are dealing with those issues and it's coming around the country. It's not just in Sydney. So yeah, Paul, what do you reckon? We get uh, we get him on the on a suit for good program with me, and we'll um, we can have a, a good cha cha and a chat. 
about what's needed. I think that might be good um, and an interesting, interesting one. I'm sure you'll um, enjoy the questions I'll fire at. Now, anything else on technologies, guys? We are going along. I've got a few other announcements to come through shortly. Um, but just going back to technology, what have we got here? Waterproof awareness. Unfortunately, the sonar devices are still struggling to measure cementitious systems. Great feedback. So there's an opportunity for those that are out there that are supplying meters, moisture meters or dry film. I'm assuming that's, that would obviously be a dry film, your sonar devices. Um, but there must be the technology coming. So um, but good point there. We'll, I'll actually put those inquiries out to our friends over in Germany that lead that technology and see what they might come back with. Jared, how are you going? Great to see you. Terry's joined Terry the Tyler. Man, this guy pumps out some work, some great work. Thanks, Terry, and great to see you. And you missed before when I was talking about the BRW PFN that's coming out in a couple of months' time. You got to get on that one. It's going to put the GC1 to shame, I think, when you start using that. You'll see how quick and easier it is. But um, great to see those videos. Keep them going, Terry. You're doing a fantastic job on Instagram. Um, now, we do have some webinars coming up, and they're free. So we've got one coming through on the 4th of May. You need to register for it. There's, um, we've got different content on different webinars. They vary from versatility to grip set primers, um, the unique products in the market, our express and sheet systems as well, uh, and the GAP program. We talk about that. But the best thing to do is get on board, give us a call, register with us, and hold your place in that webinar. Zen Bathrooms, Newcastle. Is there a way of joining BRW Sheet PF membrane without the use of a liquid system? Well, um, Zen, you, you've prompted me on a really good one here, and this is where we talk about technology and waterproofing. So as I mentioned earlier, we've got the PF N grade coming out shortly. It's a new improved system. And on that, you'll see that there is a self-sealing edge like we have on our BRW HD system along one side, and that has been designed to enable a seal um, that will seal without having to use a liquid. You'll find that most of our specifications will still require that and recommend it. Shane is joined, how are you? But I would suggest that you um, give it a go, but it's always just good practice to cut in back against that lap joint with, a, with one of our liquids. Now, it may not be to the detail that you're currently doing, but it will be like the BRW HD system with a self-sealing edge. And also, as I said, get onto the BRW FG tape because that will enable you to prevent the liquid. You can try that out with the lap joints if you like. And I'm going to get Shani to run a video on that and show you. I might do it on one of our Silver for Good programs, but give it a go. But yes, that is coming, Zen. So I hope that answers that question. Exodus, back to the B50 tape. Can it be used with cementitious membranes on negative work? Okay, I hope this is a good question. So let's take this into um, context. We've got a negative application. You have to ask yourself, why would you want to use a tape over a joint that's got negative waterproofing? If it's both positive and negative, then you may. But if the issues are negative waterproofing, um, you've got to make sure that that's plugged up because the tape is, is going to burst under pressure. Membranes won't. The cementitious systems, obviously, a C1P E60 won't. But you've got to be careful of trying to put a tape on a joint in negative application if water's coming through. Alpha waterproofing. I would like to see a PVC stick-on style angle to bridge big gaps in shower trays where the sheeters don't drop the sheeting down. Yeah, look, this is, that's a good, another good comment, Alpha, and uh, that is another technology coming out. We've got something that we've been working on internally uh, that might overcome that. It's not PVC, but it runs in the concept of where you're going and it allows, we're, we're just trying to work through this, we're doing some trials at the moment, that is a water stop that will enable you to do exactly as you've uh, claimed there. If you wanted to stick down a PVC uh, angle, this is the way to go. You peel this back if you missed it before on the back of the PVC piece at the base and it'll stick directly to plastic as long as it's oil free. 
and moisture free, and then I get it by the tape off. Um, and double sided stick, it'll bond to the surface and to the PVC. And as you put pressure on it, the beauty of butyl under compression, it forms a compression seal. It's instant. You're not waiting for anything to dry. Fully compatible with the Gripset 38. The other sheets we've got, the liquids. And so give this a try. As I mentioned earlier, our resellers have got this now. Ask for the BRW FG tape. If they don't have it, they'll get it in for you. But again, for, the, for what this is, you keep it in your van, your car, and any job you can use it. And you can not only just use it for those, but even for flashings outside, any detailing you just need to do where you don't want to put a sealant in and wait for it to dry, that is the alternative and it works perfect. So give it a go. I mentioned the webinar and also GAP courses. There's only some final spots left, I've been told today, as of tonight before we came on air. So don't forget to register for GAP courses if you haven't done it. When you come out of that GAP course, you will come out a different man, a different waterproofer or a different woman. We have had both sexes in our courses, but get yourself into them because you're going to come out more knowledgeable. Great conversations. You meet other people as well. You meet the famous Shani Milans, our technical trainer. And now with some of the other products that are coming to our access with our tiling systems as well, grip sets going to a completely different platform and level and you're going to be getting that firsthand. So register. Don't miss out. Now, I'm just going to quickly get into my conversation about where I'd like to see some of the technologies advance in waterproofing. And probably the comment before was about cementitious waterproofing and being able to um, measure the, the dry film thickness with the sonar detector. But I'd actually like to see where we're going with... Um, GAP courses are in Brisbane and the Gold Coast, so please uh, send us a message and we'll give you those dates and, and the times. I'd like to see where cement-based technology is going. With all the silica issues that are coming out globally, I think this is where the next line of developments will be with uh, manufacturers and chemists and, and lab specialists globally. Where are the alternatives? We have seen things like geocements that are out there in the corporate, in the civil market and they're being trialled, but having cements that are non-silica based, I think, and or a cement that works in a similar way, I think there's a massive opportunity. Um, and this is where, personally, I, I would like to start to see alternatives that we keep our people and our trades on site safer um, from those situations. And what else could, it, could there be? I did see many years ago the technology overseas, which looked like a cement, worked like a cement, smelled like a cement, but it wasn't Portland cement, and it was acid resistant, and it blew my mind. Um, and that's where the technology needs to come, and I'd like to see that. Brendan from New Zealand, how are you going? Good to see you. Hope things are going well over there, over the ditch, and you're safe from all the COVID issues that have been going around. And that makes me remember to um, say hello to our friends in WA. I hope you're coping okay over there, and... Uh, on the clear way, away from um, the lockdowns and closures and everything else has sort of been um, been hit over the last couple of weeks there. So, you guys, yeah, if you've got any other technologies you'd like to share that you'd like to think should come through in the development world of the waterproofing land and where the opportunities are, let's hear it. Or we'll post them in later if you can't think of them now, but you can think of them later, uh, after this, this episode. But I'm really keen to see where cement technology goes. I th would like to see, for me, I think the dangers on site to both users, contractors, build, other building um, trades that are there, things like heating, et cetera, really are a, um, a thing of the past. We should be able to avoid those technologies now. We should be able to avoid solvents and also enable things to be done better. Robin Weber has... Uh, sent a message. How do I register as I use your products, but I haven't done it a course... And I have to give my license register with HIA and Master Plus Builders and cancel as I do house and public pools. Robin, if you can send us a message, we'll get the details to you and um, have the uh, details for how you can get into the course and find out where you are and we'll give you, we'll give you all the help on that. Jared, you missed me before, buddy. BRWPF, I said that great question from Jared, those you haven't seen this one. Is there a wall sheet application? 
for the PF. And I'm gathering that Jared's referring to bathrooms and wet areas. Well, hold on tight, mate, because we are bringing out a BRW PFN, which is stronger, uh, but works in the same vein as the BRW PF. And the trials that we're doing with that, wall applications will be one of those. And we believe it's going to be a winner in terms of how you're going to be able to do it. So that will enable you to start using that for wall applications. I know you love that, that, that system. You've done some fantastic work with on, on the floors we saw last year with those balconies. So, yeah, you can uh, you can check that one out. Um, Stefan Scriggins, how long before you move on, Phil? Unless anyone pushes me, I am here. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. So, and unless, Stefan, you don't want to see me anymore, then I'm, I'm still here. So, um, still around and doing the grip set stuff because yeah, grip set is me. Jared, rock and roll? Yeah, definitely. Give, give um, Alex a yell and he'll know more about it. And when we're doing those trials here in Adelaide, he'll be on... Um, be able to show you firsthand, or Shandy can as well. Any other questions or te technology and waterproofing questions that are coming through? Um, please throw them my way. Like I said, if you remember after this episode, you can send us a message and I'll answer that, or our team will. But we're always open to hearing where you think the opportunities are or where the pain points are and how we might be able to develop a system for you that can overcome all those issues. So... Those of you on Facebook tonight that have sent messages through, apologies, I've not been able to see them the way that uh, the technology in this land has been set up. I've seen them on YouTube and I've seen them on our Instagram page. But if they have been sent through on Facebook, we'll get to them and we'll definitely load them up uh, and, and answer to you uh, shortly, if not tonight, tomorrow. All right, guys, remember, water-driven technology, where it's at. You've got our liquid systems. You, not just the 38FC, but the Express Multi Pro. You've got the sheet systems, the BRW. You have also um, the HD, the PF, the PFN that'll be coming out in a couple of months. The new FG tape. You need to get this fiberglass reinforced, beautiful tape, double sided into you because it'll work. And make sure um, you look at things like moisture meters, dry film testers. A couple of questions come through. Superflex, how are we? Are there any issues with underfloor heating and grip set product? No, not when they use the specification. So good question. If you are using underfloor heating systems with any of our products, you always put the underfloor heating over the membrane because otherwise you're going to insulate and you won't get the heating effects. So waterproofing happens first and you put the underfloor heating before the tiling application. But unless they pin through the membrane, the heat that's generated with those situations will not impact our liquid or our sheet system so go for it and you can recommend that for sure lee uh, any more plans for regional training in queensland yes we are we're looking at regional australia all over again lee please send us through any, uh, a message and we'll be in touch because that will be the um that'll be the way to go h2o sell a lot of grip set now base it will be selling it i doubt it they're not a grip set reseller. So um, you get it from where you sell and who's a grip set reseller. And the grip set resellers are the grip set resellers. Uh, grip set is its own brand and still runs the way it's always run. So even though the RLA thing has happened, uh, grip set's team is independent and is running it and it's selling it through all our loyal gap resellers and our grip set resellers and toll stores around the country. So Go for it, Stefan. You'll be good. You can be rest assured that you, you, um, you've, you've got access to it and you can get it from wherever you want. That's a grip set reseller. Um, any training plans for regional Queensland? So, yeah, please, Lee, uh, give us those. Uh, give us a message on that and we'll get those details. But regional Australia is a big one. It was very successful for us last year during COVID where we did part of the course online and then we went out and uh, did them regionally with the hands-on. But let us know. Gerson is a legend. He's a real legend. If I wasn't a gentleman, I'd say I'd drop an expletive there, but Gerson is a legend and he's a great guy to have on site and show you how to do things as well, uh, both liquids and sheets. Hanska, hello there. I'm back home in Tassie. Are the products available down here? I loved using them when in Victoria. Everything worked perfectly. Well, Hanska, uh, and I hope I pronounced that correctly, definitely. They are available in Tasmania. 
Um, again, I can get Darren to give you a hand or our customer service team can give you the resellers down there that have got them. But they are perfect for the Tasmanian climate. And those of you in those climates like Tassie and Canberra this time of year, all those technologies we went through tonight, they are the bomb. So use them in there. It'll, it'll be very, very helpful. Um, Jared, are any floor prep products coming out for the finish type products? Jared, man, you must be a mind reader. We've got all this stuff coming through that's getting packaged shortly, all groups set branded, and you have it at your disposal. So um, keep tuning into our team. They'll let you know about it, and it will be available, and they're great quality, great quality. The other technology I wanted to talk about, which was one I forgot before, but someone's just prompting me now, is our H2O primer. Those of you that haven't used it, a lot of the times you're using the E60 and epoxy primer for screeds, and you're doing it to ensure that you don't get any blistering in the membrane, which is great. However, sometimes that's over-engineered and you're waiting for it to dry four hours, five hours in the cooler conditions. It could be sort of eight hours or longer. The H2O primer, you can put on a screed. It goes down as a white liquid. looks like the GP primer. You'll see that it may have a green tinge when it's drying, and then it dries clear. But the benefit of it, it dries quick. It stops efflorescence and it will stop the blistering and bubbling as long as it's only stopping the residual moisture in the screen. If you've got rising damp from underground applications, you've got to go with our E60. But if you've got residual moisture in the screen that could be damp, dry enough to walk on but concerned about it blistering outside, get on the H2O primer. It's another great product to use this time of year, in fact, all year round. And, man, it's cost-effective when you work it out square metre. Um, and it's fairly well idiot-proof. You know, it's a liquid. You, you get it out there, you brush it on, roll it out soaks in, it's a fantastic product. If you haven't used it yet, get on to the Express H2O Primer. It's something that you should be onto and trying. Guys, I'm uh, pooped. I should have brought a beer in here. I've got a cool rich water, but I reckon it's about beer time for you guys as a, or, a, or a glass of red at this time of the day after a hard day on the job. Those in New Zealand probably got stuck into that. Um, but thanks for joining tonight, guys. Again, technology and waterproofing. Like I mentioned before, the point I want to raise with you is that you can't improve the industry if we don't push the technology forward. Stephen Campbell, I'm semi-retired now, but this is a good place to keep abreast of the change in the industry. Grips, it's a good company with great products. Thank you very much, Stephen. I really appreciate those comments and appreciate your support. So, guys, remember that. We, can't, we can be here, I can be here, my team can be here around the country and push and push and push in terms of ensuring we have improvements. But you guys need to engage where the technological improvements are and use those products. Show builders. When a builder sees something new like the BRW and then they see someone using a bitumen product, they're going to ask the question, why is the bitumen guys not using what the BRW guys? Go to Butyl. It's, it's a better technology what it can do, job finish, longer warranty, quicker, no delays with the with, uh, cooler conditions, hot conditions. Show where you're at, the express lay sheet. You know, it's something that's just not around. Use it. Once you've used it, you'll get the support from your clients. You're not only going to advance the industry, you might find yourself making more money, getting paid more for it. You're doing jobs quicker. But we're responsible to embrace technology, and that happens with the products that we use not just with you know, little toys like this. We need to look at products that we can use to improve the industry. And when you do that, it's like you, you're rattling out the guys that are still using the old crap and shit out there. You're taking technology and the industry to another level. So make sure that we're looking at that. And like we said before, moisture meters, think of those to have them with you. Dry film testers, and as Waterproof Awareness said, uh, Byron about the sonar detectors, if you're going to buy a dry film tester, check it. Ask, can it check out a dry film for a cementitious system? If not, you might be able to find that there are some out there or others that might be coming onto the market that can do it all. But these are things you want to have. You want to be a quality waterproofer. You want to do a great job. And you want to make sure that you're lifting that industry. All right, guys. Um, thanks for joining us. I am going to go. I'll see you on our next episode live. All the sealed for good. Thanks for your support. Have a great end of the week tomorrow. We'll see you next week.